A little chilly this morning. A little chilly, but again, it's overcast today, but when the sun comes out, it'll warm up pretty good. We yeah. don't usually come out this early either. No, so. well, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's late May. You know, it's kind of that late springtime fishing. They bring the water levels up in all the rivers, obviously, with the runoff. And even though this is a tailwater fishery, we still get the big runoff. I like starting with my indicator fishing. You know, indicator fishing is uh, quite exciting. I know you always start with the bulldog. Yeah, I usually start. Well, it gives us two different styles, and we find out what's working well. Oh, but... when are you going to learn how to indicator fish? Well, <laughs> indicator, <laughs> indicator. I think you mean it's indicator. More... Well, here, here's the variety. <laughs> I mean, and everybody should use it. You know, we we focus on this on the lakes, and really, we call them indicators, but really they're bobbers. I well, mean... oh, look at this thing. Like that's what, the, that's right an that? indicator. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the size well, look of at it. it. It depends on the water condition. You know, you can, you've got little guys for the lake conditions. You've got the big bobbers I like to use in the big water. You know, it holds the fly up. It's like when you're a kid. You're always bobber fishing. You know, different colors. Maybe today, the bulldog's going to learn how to indicate a well, fish in the river. Well, that's what I'll do that. I'll fire my bulldog first. We'll see what happens. Okay. And then I'll uh, maybe try this, this indicator right fishing. Right on. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. So that's today as we take a spore fishing on the fly. John. Oh, nice little guy to start. Oh, 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 oh nice there. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Whoa, he's jumping right in the boat. <laughs> Crazy. Wow, first cast. Lots of fun. And it's still cold. I mean, it's about uh, well, nine o'clock in the morning. We normally don't even start till, till noon, but we thought, hey, let's get an early jump. You know, they may raise the water on us this time of year. We never know, and once they raise the water on you, you're in trouble because it'll just dirty up the water. You get lots of uh, floating debris, big logs come down, and it's never good for fishing. It shuts them, shuts them right off. But normally in the, in the mornings, they kind of keep it consistent. There's this little guy to start. Hit the nymph, just uh, you know, one of the smaller guys we'll get today. So I'm just gonna try to unbutton him. He's just a little guy. There he's right on the oh. On top of the lip, little guy. Just where normally you got him, just floating in there. He goes. Nice. And what I've started with is my favorite color. This is my favorite color, Prince Nymph. I've got a variety of different Prince Nymphs. This one's a purple color. I've got orange. I've got black. I've got green. I've got gunmetal gray. This time of year, and it's worked on all the different streams we fished. Variety of sizing on the Prince Nymph, but mainly it's the variety of colors. So when you're you know, if you're tying this on a size uh, 12, size 14, nymph hook, it's great. That's a perfect size for it, but vary the colors. That's the biggest thing. I've tried fluorescent oranges, real dark oranges, purples, pinks, and this color always shines, the purple. So we'll keep trying it, and if it's successful, we'll get the bulldog on to some. Whoa, this guy feels a little bit heavier. This might be net worthy, <laughs> this fish. He's definitely net worthy. Oh yeah, he's nice just shaking down there. Oh man, fighting good. Still not popping my, oh there he is there. That's a nice one, got real, ooh, she. Real nice colors to him. Pretty fish, wow. He's not ready. Man, he's just shaking down there. Yeah, he's just, oh. There he is. Oh, that's a nice fish. Decent size. Yeah. Whoa, right in the top. Right in the top of the lip. Yeah. It's the purple guy. Oh, look at his battered. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. It's getting beat up. Oh, yeah, but there's a nice fish. You know, again, not huge, but just nice colors. All right. Let's let this guy go. He's going to want to go right away. Eh, he's not huge, but just there he goes. Just nice fish. Ooh. Good. Well, oh, the purple guy. The purple guy. Yeah, you've had quite a few on that. Yeah. That's which is good. And you've had a lot of hits on the bulldog, but they're kind of nipping Yeah, but they're still early, so they haven't lit up yet. But I think I might try that. Maybe switch over, try the big orb. Yeah. Well, you know, you can go back and forth, right? And yeah. You know, that's the beauty out here. You want, a, you, you want a few different setups. Of course, you want the full sink line. The Dale's using a wet line. You want the dry lines, of course, for the indicator fishing. We even use sink tips in here a lot of times. We'll just string a, a streamer at the end of a sink tip line, and it works good. 
So, I'm back at it. I might have to change purple though, he looks pretty beat up. He looked beat. Another one, like oh, little that. guy. Whoa. <laughs> You're gonna have to go to the indicator. You're gonna have to <laughs> suck it up. Throw on it. Oh, this one jumped in the boat. Oh, another nice one. Beautiful. Very nice. Oh, oh well. Long line release just popped off there. So the setup you're using, is I'll go through it real quick. So I've got the dry line set up, of course, which is quite nice. I put on a 12 foot leader. And what I did, because I want to vary the depth, so I'm going to fish about normally six to eight feet. So I put on a 12 foot leader and on the end of my 12 foot leader, and the 12 foot leader is pretty thick. I've actually used about an eight to 10 pound 12 foot leader. I've got my little barrel swivel, small little swivel set up. And off that, I've got about two to three feet of fluorocarbon, probably three feet of my you know, four pound fluoro. I, I want to keep this fairly light because if I, if I break it anywhere, I want this to, to break off. And I go down to my fly and then I've got the little slip strike indicator or as we call it, the bobs. But uh, these are real nice to use because you can just peg them. And again, we've shown everybody this lots of times. You just pull the fly line or the line in, your leader, and you wrap it over and peg it. And then when you catch fish, it just pops and slides down. So you can actually bring them in if you have, especially if you're fishing long leaders. So that's my setup today. Okay, I'm just gonna switch from the bulldog. They were hitting the tail and stuff. So now I've tied on a little booby fly. So I thought, ah, I'll strip that in because Don's getting lots on the nymph and they're just hitting the tail of this. So I think that uh, little booby fly might attract them in there. Again, everything, anything to prevent going to the strike indicator. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> He just hates the indicator. <laughs> so you just couldn't do it. You just couldn't go to the indicator. You had to go to the deep water retractor. <laughs> you just can't part without wet line, can you? I think I can just unbutton him. He looks like he's hooked in the corner. There you go. <laughs> Tequila. Tequila. Tequila always works. It works everywhere. It looks like nothing in nature. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. Booby, highly effective. <laughs> They're whacking the booby. <laughs> Everything eats tequila. It. Look at That's that. It. Everything eats tequila. Whoa, he's off. He's off. But they like it. It we was a good switch over guys. because they weren't hitting the. They're hitting the tail of the bulldog, but they're eating tequila. They always eat tequila. And why? Why? Yellow, orange, tinsel flash, big styrofoam eyes, like why? Just it's attracts gotta be the them. erratic action. Or you something. know, it's erratic action. Looks like something moving, something alive. And that's the crazy. other thing you gotta do when you're stripping the booby. It's usually, I like the three quick strips. Stop. Three quick. Stop. And then, of course, it floats up when you stop. But you know, when you give it quick, three quick strips like that, it really gets that fly moving. Well, it's kind of slowed down here a bit. We haven't had a fish in 10 minutes. Of course, we're, we're very impatient. We like to be hooking fish all the time. And there's so many different, different holes. Ooh, there's a bite. So many different holes out here to fish. And we've got another favorite we're gonna head up to. So always looking for the bigger fish. You know, there's a few holes that really hold some large fish in here. So I think we'll head to that guy next and, and give it a go and see if it's fishing any better. Just, we just pulled up to the new hole. You're already cast and you already got a fish. Yeah. Well, this is a nice one. Yeah, not yeah, bad. We expect bigger fish here. You know, First cast with the tequila. With tequila. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just off the spawn. Long and long and thin, right? Oh, yeah. A lot longer, but he's, he's thinner. But he wanted that right away. Ooh. What does he look like? 
Must be pretty good. All right, Cromer. Oh, that's a nice fish. Yeah. Down a little bit deeper, eh? Down a little deeper. A little deeper. A little slacker water, a little deeper. So maybe these guys are in here getting bulked up. It looks like it. Looks like yeah. they're just, you know, see they're just coming off that spawn. Coming they're thinner. Yeah. And they're just starting to shape up again, right? Okay. Look pretty good. Yeah, they're in that same size. They're bigger than the ones in the last hole. Yeah. But coming up. No, right in that groove. And I think there's that other spot over there that's in the bigger hole. We might slide over there. Well, we saw some big fish porpoise there. Yeah, that's right. We saw some bigger guys over there. So, well, that's got some meat to them. Oh, that was better fish. Geez, we, so we slid out into the bigger hole. And we knew, we knew we were going to get some bigger guys, guys out here. This guy's got the big head shake. You can tell he's big fish because he's just sitting there shaking his head. I got my line in. Oh, yeah, he's oh, nice. Oh, he looks I nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at him down there. We got some troubles there. I do. We got the current in the... <laughs> the current in the four weight. Yeah. Ooh, here some comes of these... a big push too. It's yeah, going to be yeah. a... some of these bigger fish here. Well, it's right in the back scene of the boat, so it should be okay. We should be able to get them up there. Okay. Oh, Ooh. no. Did you break it? Nope. Just unbuttoned. I wanted to show everybody that. It was, was a big toad. Big boy. And Don't bright I, silver too. I know, big chromer. It's hard in here though with the curve. Yeah, it is. But you know we're in the right spot because you yeah, can see how we're holding right in these seams. They love that's these the seams. ones we're after now. That was well over 20 inches. Oh, so that's a, that was a nice fish. Ooh, hit the green one. Oh, that's a better fish. I finally took off <laughs> purple tuft. <A> purple tuft. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was all that was left in my fly was a was a chunk of purple tuft, and I put on my green machine. So it's oh, that's what. Oh, 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 that's, that's a, a nice better fish. fish. Wow. So I put on my uh, my green one. Whoa, oh, geez. that's a nice that's fish. That's a nice fish. And he hit the green right away, so. He's got some you... heft. Maybe I better put on the strike indicator. <laughs> you might have to. <laughs> they've gone off the booby. Yep, they've gone off the booby. And that's a better fish, too. You get that in all. As I mentioned earlier in the show, I've got a variety of colors on the uh, on the Prince, Prince Nymphs and a whole bunch of different sizes. Out here, 14s, 12s, those are probably the best. And this is actually a, a real cool new color. It's uh, again, a light bright, but it's, a, it's almost a peacock curl green. It's a real nice color and that was three casts and three hits. So pretty effective. And this guy's a better fish. This is a nice size. Change over. I it's put time. it on the giant orb. <laughs> the Maybe I'll use the, the regular size bobber first. Yeah, this is more like what we're expecting out here. This is a yeah, decent nice size fish. fish. And he's just chrome again, beautiful and, and tough. Holy cow. Four weight could be a little underpowered. I think so. Look at this guy. Jeez. Holy cow. He was That's pretty nice thick, fish, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's fat. Yeah, no Chunky, kidding. full of spunk when he was leaping around out there. Okay, first shot you get at him, we gotta get him. Ooh, I don't, yeah. Because I lost that other one that was yeah. a real nice big one too in that other hole. Huh? Boy, he's gotta get his head up if I can. Mm -hmm. Boy, he's just twirling. Oh, yeah, that's decent. Oh, yeah, Let's put him on this side. That's a, that's a chunker. That's hefty. There, flies out. This nice size fish. This is better. Whoa, 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 whoa. Tough to, tough to grab hold of. Left out of that. There he is there. Oh, look at that guy. Another beautiful chrome bullet. That's more like it. You know, it's getting into the 20 inch range now. But still, none of the big 22s, 24s yet. We lost that. A couple of nice ones in the last hole. So what do you think? Change it over? Okay. <laughs> Give me one of those little green guys. I'll try it out there. Yeah. That's that new oh, green new. material. Like, like I said, I've got all those different, uh, all those different varieties. And I, you know, that Prince Nymph style with all the different light brights. They make about 20 different versions of light bright. Some UV, some not. It's fantastic stuff. Like it's well, just. I saw you with that oh, one. Like three brilliant. cast, three hits. Yeah, three hits. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by 
Islander Precision Reels, Mountain Valley Sports Fishing and Tours, and Maui Gym Sunglasses. Nice one. Oh, I think that. I think the good ones are starting to feed. Wow. <laughs> Here I am trying to get. Oh no, a little smaller guy, but still. I'm a trying and to. Then, and I just actually, you just put down your rod to change over. I just put the fly back out there, and another one right off the bat, about the same size. Wow, they're starting to feed now. Overcast conditions, just perfect. Oh man. Alrighty. Wow. Okay, come on. Can you get your head up now? Oh, there he is. Holy cow. There he goes. Oh, that was a battle. Well, that's four fish in a row, and I'm going to get it back out there. So let's go to the bench. I'm going to tie up a special little light bright Princeton. Today on the bench, I'm going to tie everyone one of my favorite beadhead nymphs, and it's called the Peacock Green Light Bright Prince Nymph. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a size 12 2x long nymph hook, some ADOT olive thread to tie with, a 3.0 millimeter copper bead as the bead, some dark olive goose bites for the tail, some Peacock Hurl Light Bright for the body, some small copper wire for the rib, black saddle hackle tips for the hackle, and some dark olive goose bites for the wing. So to start the fly off, I've put my bead onto the hook and I've got the small hole of the bead towards the eyelet and I've tied on my thread. And now what we're gonna do is take the thread back and we're gonna put a little small little bump, little tag on the very back end of the dubbing so that we can split our tail. So I've taken a small pinch of my dubbing, just a real small amount just to the very back of the hook and I'm just going to form a small butt on the, on the fly of the peacock dubbing. And this will be to split the tail and you'll see how I'm going to do that in a minute. Now that I have the butt tied in at the back, I've taken two goose bites and I've split them so that they're V'd. You can just see they're V'd out so they splay to form a tail. So I'm just going to make them about the length of the hook and put them back and just tie them off and make sure they stay to either side. A couple loose wraps and then tighten up and you'll see that, that uh, the tail just forms off the butt. Next step is to take some fine copper wire and we're just gonna lay it along the length of the hook just to keep the body even. So I'll start near the back of the bead and just wrap it in. This will form the rib later. Now that I have the rib tied in, I wanna form the body. And when you tie this body, make sure it stays nice and thin. You don't want a really thick body on this fly. And all we're gonna do is just pick off some of this dubbing and make sure your fingers are wet. It just helps dub it on. You can actually form a dubbing brush if you like, or you can just pull these fibers off and just roll it onto your thread and form a nice thin body. Now that I have all the dubbing on my thread, I'm just gonna start wrapping forward. And again, just keep it nice and small. Just kind of taper it towards the bead and go back over it a couple times just to form a nice tapered body and just to wrap in that dubbing a little bit better. And end at the bead. Now we have the body tied in, we're gonna take our rib, our ribbing material, which is our fine copper wire, and out the back, and I'm gonna reverse the direction. I'm gonna go the opposite direction. I tied the body in and make about five to six wraps up to your bead. And tie off right at the bead. Now that we have the rib tied in and our threads back behind the bead, I'm going to take a hackle tip. Now make sure it comes off a saddle hackle and it's just the tips we want. We want to keep these fairly small. We don't want it splaying out too much. And we're just going to tie it in right behind the bead. Get a couple good wraps in there. Cut off our excess. And then just wrap it probably two to three times. Keep the hackle fairly small and tie off. Now that the hackle's tied in, we want to put on the wing. And the wing, we want to extend these goose bites just the length of the hook. And we want them V'd. So we want them V'd like that, just so they're forming a V on the top of the fly. Extend them back just to, just to where the tail starts. Lay them on, 
take a couple loose wraps again to start and then tighten up. And that'll keep that, keep it V. And then I take a couple of wraps in front of where I'm gonna cut those extra goose bites off. And there's the wheel. So to finish the fly off, we're gonna whip finish. So I'll take about, uh, you know, four wraps just to form a green head behind the bead. So it's all whip finished. And we'll give it a, a dab of our, our head cement. So there it is, the finished Peacock Green Light Bright Print Snip. And the thing we do is we tie this in multiple light bright colors and they're all very effective. The Bulldog on the indicator. Beautiful. Probably be a, <laughs> probably be a six inch fish. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a nice one. Look at there. What's that orange thing on the end of my line? It's called a, it's called a bobber. <laughs> well, they're used to fighting this current. They're all just, uh, they're, like a, they're just chrome in perfect shape. Yeah. Right? They just, uh, they, they just feed all year long in here. The water temperature right now, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. There he is there. I'll just even hold your line up while I'm buttoning. Okay, here. Oh, Look at that. Yeah, right in the top lip. Just unhook him here. There he is. Flies out. Kind of normal size, you know, like ah, 18 really nice, inches or so. And there he goes. Very nice. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. Strong fish. 50 degree water temp. It's just prime for him. You know, the rainbows in here start cranking around 48, 48 degrees Fahrenheit until it gets to about 64. And then everything slows down. But that takes, you know, three or four months to get to that. Oh, yeah, they're nice, healthy fish. Though. Oh, they, they are. are that same yep. size All about range, same nice size. and chunky. And... There he is there. You know, it's just nice. Not huge, just nice size. Okay, I'll let that guy go. There he goes. To eat another day. Well, Bulldog. Pretty good day. Yes, it was a good day. Not bad at all, eh? A little wet from that. We had it all. We had big water, dirty water, clean water. We had sun, <laughs> we had cloud, we had rain. Had to take a break for a while. What else do we have? We, we had, had boobies. Boobies and bulldogs. <laughs> What else did we have? Oh, we full had, sink line. We tried our, yeah, we had full sink. We did the strike indicator. Yeah, yeah the two with the full sink. The booby, though, is stripped totally different than the yeah. bulldog. So, anyway, it gives you a good variety. You know, that's the thing about big water. Anytime you come on a big system, even a big lake, big rivers, bring your different setups. You know, ideally, the full sink lines, clear intermediate sink, sink tip, and a dry line. You know, those are kind of the key four you want yeah. to have to be versatile. And of course, if you're Dale, you just bring your full sink, bring a uh, bulldog, a couple of, a couple of tequilas. No, I was going to get a, that was a big accomplishment today to get you on the indicator. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was right. pretty well, happy about that. Yeah. And you're banging fish. Yeah. yeah. You're not a visual guy. You like feeling the big, <laughs> the big pull. Anyway, when you come out on big water, life preservers, make sure you're wearing them. Take care, conserve the waters, and we'll see you next time when we take you sport fishing on the fly. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca and if you would like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to ontheflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.